Everyone thinks IBM, Google and Microsoft are competing to build the best quantum computer. They're not. They're fighting three completely different wars and only one of them understands what they're actually fighting for. Two of these companies won't survive what's coming. This isn't just corporate competition. This is technological warfare where the stakes are so high that the losing companies might cease to exist as we know them. And right now, most people are completely misunderstanding what this war is actually about. While everyone focuses on qubit counts and quantum supremacy demonstrations, the real battle is being fought on a completely different battlefield that most analysts don't even recognize. Welcome back to Click Future, where your future is a click away. Today we're exposing the quantum war that's really happening and why it's nothing like what you've been told. Here's what everyone gets wrong about the quantum computing competition. They think IBM, Google and Microsoft are all trying to solve the same problem. They're not. IBM is fighting to survive as a technology company by betting everything on quantum hardware. Google is fighting to maintain their dominance in computation and AI by proving quantum supremacy. Microsoft is fighting to control the quantum ecosystem without actually building quantum computers. These are three completely different strategies targeting three completely different definitions of victory and only one of them makes strategic sense for the next decade. The global quantum computing market is projected to reach $125 billion by 2030, but that's not the real prize. The real prize is the $12 trillion in economic value that quantum computing could unlock across industries. Here's the crucial insight that most analysis misses. Quantum computing isn't winner-takes-all because of technology superiority. It's winner-takes-all because of ecosystem control and customer lock-in. The first company to achieve practical quantum advantage won't just get customers, they'll get to define what quantum computing means for the next generation of applications. Let's start with IBM because they have the most to lose and the most desperate strategy. IBM was once the undisputed king of computing, but they've watched Apple, Google, Amazon and Microsoft surpass them in market value. Cloud computing happened without them, mobile computing happened without them, AI happened without them. Quantum computing is their last chance to reclaim technological leadership and they know it. That's why they've bet their entire future on what they call utility-scale quantum computing. IBM's strategy is built around immediate practical applications. Their Condor system has 1,121 qubits, more than any other quantum computer, but IBM isn't playing the numbers game for publicity. They're focused on solving real business problems right now, even if those solutions are limited. Dr. Jay Gambetta, IBM's VP of Quantum Computing, recently announced they've achieved quantum advantage for specific optimization problems. According to IBM's testing, their quantum computers can solve certain logistics and financial modeling problems faster than classical supercomputers. Here's IBM's real advantage. Enterprise relationships. IBM has been selling computers to Fortune 500 companies for over a century. They understand enterprise security, compliance, and procurement better than Google or Microsoft. IBM's quantum network includes over 200 organizations. JP Morgan Chase, Daimler, Oxford University. These aren't research partnerships. These are paying customers using IBM quantum computers for actual business applications. IBM's roadmap targets 4,000 qubits by 2026 and 100,000 qubits by 2030. 
But their real strategy isn't about building the most powerful quantum computer, it's about building the most useful quantum computer for enterprise customers. The problem with IBM's strategy? They're being outspent by Google and Microsoft, and they're being out-innovated by smaller companies like Quera and IonQ. IBM's quantum computers are impressive, but they're expensive, complex, and difficult to use. IBM is fighting a hardware war in an ecosystem battle. Google's approach is completely different and much more dangerous for their competitors. While IBM focuses on practical applications, Google is pursuing what they call quantum supremacy, building quantum computers that can solve problems impossible for classical computers. Google's recent Willow chip achievement is the perfect example. Their quantum computer performed a calculation in five minutes that would take classical computers 10 septillion years. This isn't just faster computing. This is accessing computational capabilities that don't exist in our classical universe. Google's real strategy isn't about quantum hardware, it's about quantum AI integration. Google's quantum computers aren't standalone systems. They're designed to work seamlessly with Google's AI infrastructure. Hartmut Nevin, founder of Google Quantum AI, has been clear about their vision. We're not just building quantum computers, we're building quantum AI systems that will transform every industry. Google is already using quantum computers to optimize their data centers, improve search algorithms, and enhance machine learning models. This gives Google a unique advantage. They can test and refine quantum systems on real problems at massive scale. Google's roadmap targets fault-tolerant quantum computers by 2029, but their real goal is quantum AI systems that can solve problems no human has ever imagined. The risk with Google's strategy? They're optimizing for breakthrough research rather than practical applications. Google has a history of amazing research that never becomes successful products. Google Glass, Google Plus, dozens of canceled projects. If Google succeeds, they won't just win the quantum market, they'll create entirely new markets that don't exist today. Microsoft's strategy is the most unconventional and potentially the most brilliant. While IBM and Google build quantum computers with existing technologies, Microsoft is betting on topological qubits, theoretical quantum bits that are protected from errors by physics itself. Topological qubits have never been successfully demonstrated. Microsoft has been working on them for over a decade without a working prototype. It's the ultimate high-risk, high-reward strategy. Microsoft isn't putting all their resources into unproven hardware. They've built Azure Quantum, a cloud platform that gives customers access to quantum computers from multiple vendors, IBM, IonQ, Quantinuum, and others. This is classical Microsoft strategy. Create a platform that everyone else builds on, then control the ecosystem. Even if Microsoft's quantum hardware fails, they could still dominate through software and cloud services. Christos Four, Microsoft's GM of quantum computing, explained their approach. We're building the quantum computing ecosystem, not just quantum computers. Whether you're using IBM qubits, Google qubits, or Microsoft qubits, you'll be using Microsoft software and cloud services. Microsoft's integration with Azure gives them massive advantages. Azure is the second largest cloud platform globally with deep enterprise relationships. Adding quantum computing to Azure could make it the default choice for businesses exploring quantum applications. Microsoft's timeline is the most uncertain. If topological qubits work, Microsoft could leapfrog everyone overnight. If they don't, 
Microsoft still controls the quantum software ecosystem. Microsoft is fighting an ecosystem war in a hardware battle. This leads us to the ultimate question. Why won't two of these companies survive the quantum war? The answer is because they're fighting the wrong battles. IBM is betting everything on quantum hardware superiority. But hardware commoditizes over time. Even if IBM builds the best quantum computers, other companies will eventually build equivalent systems at lower costs. Google is betting on quantum supremacy and breakthrough research, but supremacy demonstrations don't translate to commercial success. Google's quantum achievements are impressive, but they're not building sustainable business models. Microsoft is betting on ecosystem control, which is the only strategy that creates lasting competitive advantages. Platforms and ecosystems generate network effects that become stronger over time. Here's what's really happening. Quantum computing will follow the same pattern as every other computing revolution. Hardware becomes commoditized, software becomes differentiated, and platforms become dominant. IBM is optimizing for the hardware phase, which will be shortest. Google is optimizing for the research phase, which doesn't generate revenue. Microsoft is optimizing for the platform phase, which will be the longest and most profitable. There's another factor most analysts miss. The quantum computing market isn't just about the big three. Smaller companies like Quera, IonQ, and Quantinuum are making breakthrough advances that could disrupt all three tech giants. Quera's algorithmic fault tolerance breakthrough could make their neural atom systems more practical than IBM's superconducting supercomputers. IonQ's trapped ion systems have the lowest error rates in the industry. Quantinuum is already commercializing quantum applications. The quantum landscape is more competitive and more unpredictable than most people realize. The prediction? IBM will struggle to compete on hardware costs and will eventually focus on quantum services. Google will achieve impressive technical breakthroughs but will struggle to monetize them effectively. Microsoft will control the largest quantum ecosystem through Azure regardless of whose hardware wins. The real winner might be a company we haven't discussed, a startup that combines the best quantum hardware with the best quantum software and the most practical business model. The quantum war is just beginning, and the companies that survive will be the ones that understand they're not just building quantum computers, they're building the infrastructure for a quantum economy. The quantum computing war between IBM, Google, and Microsoft isn't what it appears to be. Each company is fighting a different battle with different definitions of victory. IBM is fighting for survival through quantum hardware. Google is fighting for supremacy through quantum research. Microsoft is fighting for control through quantum platforms. Only one of these strategies creates sustainable, competitive advantages. The others are fighting battles they can't win in a war they don't understand. What do you think? Which company's quantum strategy makes the most sense? And which quantum applications will determine the real winners? Let me know in the comments below. If this analysis changed how you think about the quantum competition, make sure to subscribe to Click Future for more insights that go beyond the mainstream narrative. Hit that notification bell so you never miss the strategic analysis that matters. And remember, your future is a click away, and that future will be determined by companies that understand what war they're actually fighting. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we'll explore how quantum internet could make regular internet obsolete.